What's up guys, this is Cher talking. welcome back to my channel. On today's video, I bring you news for months in Saga Universe. And Square Enix just announced double banners for Saga Soul. For those that do not know, Saga Souls are banners that are based on styles that are not so popular. They are from Emperor Saga, a mobile gacha game that never got released on the West. So we'll be talking about both banners. We already have all the information, but we have to go straight to... Reddit, in a post by Hans43, thank you so much for always doing this amazing job. We can discuss Sirius, a very good style that will be another one in the meta for harder challenges. We have 110% STR, 100 Endurance, and 100 Wheel. Those are good status. We have lower GDT, but this doesn't change how Sirius works. Now, on turn begins, it buffs STR and Intelligence by 15% of everyone's. Then, he enters a town stance of medium effect that lasts for 4 turns and stacks. It's not as good as Julian's that has taunt, but also stealth applied to all other allies. But on turn 4, you have max potential, and from there onwards, you have very high chance of being attacked. We will also get 2 extra VP for a total of 5. And then uh, we have 2 stuff that will happen when using skills. I'll be discussing this later. Now, when you are attacked by a skill, that is serious. You will decrease the STR of all enemies by 5%. So if one enemy attack you, then all enemies will get this debuff. If there are multiple enemies on the field, this can trigger multiple times. But this is when an enemy uses a skill. When an uh, enemy uses a spell, then it will debuff the intelligence of all enemies by 5%. When it's a skill, it will also buff all surviving allies' endurance by 15%, and when it's intelligence, it will buff all surviving allies' will by 15%. See what's being used here? If an enemy is using a skill, you are debuffing the main status, being STR, but physical skills can still be based on STR plus agility, or sometimes dexterity, and then you'll be increasing your endurance to resist physical skills. And when attacked by magical attacks, you'll be debuffing the intelligence of the enemy to decrease damage and ailment chances, and also buff your will to decrease that even further. Now, there are two other rules. If the skill is direct, well, not all physical skills are direct, but if they are direct, you will also debuff the enemy agility by 5%. And again, all enemies when series attack it. And then you will buff love of all allies by 15%. This is defensive so that healing effects from series will be boosted. And if you are indirectly attacked, then you will debuff the dexterity of all enemies by 5%. All debuffs are 5%. And then buff the charisma of all surviving allies by 15%. So, love and charisma will help you with healing, no matter the status. All indirect attacks uh, will debuff dexterity on the enemies. Why dexterity? Because bow skills and gun skills are indirect, so this helps. Not all of them though, but all spells are indirect, so you will have a combination of debuffing intelligence and dexterity of the enemies on these occasions. If there's just one enemy, it still works well, but it's much better if there are multiple enemies or multi-attacks. Sirius also has Iron Wall Defense 7, decreasing damage taken by 50% at all times. Now, the first skill is free, it's E Power and has Slash and Sun Damage, can recover the HP of our allies by very small effect. When you don't consider any buff, this will be around 250, but because we buff Love and Charisma all the time, this can scale super well, reaching around 400 after some turns. Now, skill number 2 is very interesting. For 7 BP, well, we get 5 per turn, that means that you cannot spend this without help of someone else. Liz will allow Sirius to have 6 BP per turn, that's already usually enough to just skip one turn or another. And you have Guard Up Large for 3 turns, decreasing damage taken by 35%. And then, an HP recover by the end of a turn, very small. Like I said, starting by 250 and reaching as much as 400 after you buff some Love and Charisma. And uh, you will also apply other effects. When you use skill 2, you will remove all buffs applied by the enemy. That's right, buff break on AoE. This is only saw on Paulus in Chiel when she uses Vortex, but she also affects your party buffs. And 
we also have an extra effect that removes all the buffs applied to allies. There are some fights where the enemies will debuff you on the end of turn and will self-buff. You can use Sirius to just keep using skill number 2 forever and buff the party and debuff the enemy when hit. Uh, the only problem here that I can see is that you will be uh, wasting ward up because it lasts for 3 turns but it does not stack with itself. And the HP recovered by the end of a turn will stack if you keep using this so you have at most 3 very small heal by the end of turn. Okay. Now, if you use skill number 3, that is a double S power attack that is fast and has just slash damage. This is critical to demon, water, fire, and earth spirits, and will grant defense down and also defense down spell, decreasing the defenses by 25% by each. Uh, spell means that only your spellcasters will do more damage by this effect, but... The first defense down works for everyone, and it lasts for two turns, and it also stacks, if I'm not mistaken. So this is useful when you are getting to overdrive, one turn before or on overdrive. Now, when you are attacked, you will also counter directly with this skill. So if you get counter many times, you will just keep applying this defense down and guard out. And also, when you use S3, you recover HP of all allies by very small effect. See where this is getting? Counter that heals, counter that uh, debuffs, and when being hit, you'll be buffing a lot of different stuff, debuffing a lot of different stuff. You can buff break, you can debuff cleans. There's way too many utilities paired up in series. Series a meta character in an OP grade, deserve it. Uh, I think that he can replace. Julian in some situations, yes, I know people love Julian, but see that sometimes we bring Julian to just buff STR, but not really counter. Sometimes it's useful to just do that. Imagine that Sirius can counter as well, although not as powerful as Julian overall. You are also buffing Endurance at will sometimes. Okay, Julian buffs Endurance, but Julian does not buff will. Julian does not get guard up. He does not buff Rake. He does not debuff cleans. See that when applicable and you don't need to counter as much, Sirius can replace Julian and even Yuma may. But if you want damage and you want fast damage, you may still prefer those two. And they will clash because they all taunt. And when you are taunting, you just want one character to be uh, the target of enemies. But Sirius is a very good style in a banner that you only have one really stellar unit. Moving on, the next is Maka, and she's a damage dealer that uses words and deals slash damage. We have 130 SDR, the highest, and 115% agility. Well, very high agility as well. And Rens and Will are just a little above the average, and nothing else matters. Starts the fight with 13 BP. When attacking, gets 2 extra. And when attacking, will also always chase with skill 1. That is a 3 BP C power. Slash attack that will also give attack boost of large effect that increases uh, damage potential by 15% on rank 1 and STR buff by 15%. When use it as command, attack boost reaches 20% and STR buff will reach 25%, but not as a chase. We also have a 50% chance to always chase with skill 3. That is a 13 BP attack with A power and hits 3 times. So if you are using skill 1 as command, you already got that attack boost, you already got some STR buff, and that attack will do even more damage. Remember Gustave Triple Crush? It's just the same thing. And then, uh, when using skill number 3, we will also buff all status by 35%. That's quite a lot. You can use skill 3 by command on turn 1, or is just use it via chase attacks. Doesn't matter, the volume will always be the same. Then you get his attack boost as well. That increases damage potential by 50%, lasts for 3 turns, can stack, and also a defense boost, this time decreasing damage taken by 25%, that also lasts for 3 turns. If you have good RNG, you can use the skill, chase it again with the same skill, and then you can have 100% attack boost and 2 stacks of 25% defense boost. This character still has... 30% damage reduction and another 30% damage reduction, 25% chance to evade, but only uh, permanent 
30% damage increase from Sword Finese. So it starts a little weak, but eventually builds up attack boost and STR boost by cycling skill number 3 and skill number 1, the same skills that you can use as a chase. You can also choose to use the second skill that is a triple S power attack that is critical to human, and when the attack lands, recover HP by around 1.5 thousand and grants itself another attack boost. That increases damage potential by 20% and lasts for 3 turns. See that you can get many attack boosts, damage will scale, and if you get good RNG, you'll be chasing multiple times. I would say that this character is a replacement for Urpina in squads where we are running already. Kihachi does not beat Kihachi in any level, but it's someone with good sustain. Like Kihachi, that is very weak, takes a lot of damage in the fight. If you are in a fight with more than 10 turns, you are better off using Maka instead of Arpina that only lasts for 10 turns of damage. But I don't see much reason to pull for Maka because many damage dealers also have party support and they are easier to slot since she is sword and also just slash, it's extremely easy to skip. I would say that this is more of a triple S character in my opinion. The last one is Sinon and it's as S sword attacker with cold element. We have only 150. 13 dexterity, 82% endurance, and 100% will. Will value is pretty nice. Agility 95. Nothing here is stellar. Now for passives, let's start with the third one. You reduce damage taken at all times by 30%. By the end of a turn, you recover HP by around 280. And also, on turn begins, if all allies are alive, you grant damage block two times to a random ally. You also recover HP by 1.5 thousand and 3 BP to another random ally. Can be the same, can be different. Well, it's random. Now, when you are attacking, you recover HP of all allies except yourself. I don't understand why. And we'll also recover 2 BP. When you attack on overdrive, you also grant all enemies this effect called noise. That will apply a dedicated type of sundered effect where uh, the enemies will receive defense down to specific element types. Pierce, Cold, and Shadow. I think it's either 10% or 15% defense now. And, well, it's like Sundered, meaning that the other characters that attack will then benefit from this. There's just one problem. The agility here is 95%, so uh, I need to be fast in order to trigger this, right? And it's easy to achieve that because the skill number 2 is fast, and it's piercing cold with S power only. And we grant the target noise. Just one target though. Because it's single target. So this specific target will have two stacks of those sundered like effects. And you can bring someone like Swift. For example, Swift has both pierce and cold attacks. And damage can scale super well, super fast. The problem is that we are just restricted to these three types. And I don't really like this idea. Also, by the end of turn, we get 25 points of overdrive dodge, and you have a um, 10% chance to recover skill tree usage. But skill tree is not even that great. It's a skill that can only be used once per battle and grants all allies damage block for two times, no turn limit. Well, you could say that this is inferior to any evasion that we may get because evasion is also capable of evading ailments. Damage block will block damage. Okay, but you can only use it once and then rely on 10% chance to use this again. Terrible, terrible, terrible. I much prefer to use Alkaiser Glory Force that gives Morale up, Ward up, and an evasion. And he gets it every five turns and already starts with two stacks. Now, uh, there is also skill number one, a free skill that buffs stacks 30 by 30% and attack with deep power. All in all, this guy is super skippable and kind of whatever. You can make some units do better damage, but he himself is terrible at doing it. I understand that sometimes we brought Macha and Creator in order to increase the damage potential of specific units, but in many case scenarios, we will get much more by adding something else. Like sometimes we may just bring Creator again and a buffer instead of bringing Creator and this guy to increase the damage of a specific unit. So, it's also related to just treat specific damage types, meaning that it is not as good as Sundered. Sadly, this character is not really great, and I will give it just an SS plus because of potential. But, as it is, very skippable and doesn't even help in Remembrance. So, I think this banner 
deserves a silver award because of Sirius. Sirius is very good, a meta unit, but here we have Maka that is a slash damage dealer that does not have party support. It's extremely easy to replace by future power creep, and Sinon has some type of utility that is limited and doesn't really change the way we play and does not replace or sunder effects. With all that said, I believe I will be skipping the banner for now, but I am thinking about Sirius, and I believe this banner is better than the second, but I suggest you guys to wait one week, and I'll be doing the full review later. But that's my opinion. What is yours? Please say here in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't, and I hope to see you soon in the next video or live stream. Goodbye.